Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in this video I'm going to be walking you guys through the Tank Mage Tower Challenge coming with Legion Time Walking in Patch 9.1.5, explaining all the different mobs, mechanics, and abilities you'll need to deal with and how to handle them. Now I did complete this on the PTR on my Guardian Druid, but even if you play one of the other tank specs, this video should still be very useful to you, and you can just use the timestamps to skip past the Guardian Druid specific portion of the video. With all that stuff said, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more tank content like it. And let's start off with some basics, basically who uh, and when can do the Mage Tower and what gear and effects are disabled. So for those unaware, the Mage Tower Challenge will be available whenever Legion Time Walking is active. You can just take yourself down to the Broken Shore, where I am right here, uh, just where the original Mage Tower was, and you'll be able to queue for it. Notably, you don't need to be max level for this. Any level 45 or higher character will do, and all your gear will scale down to item level 50. On the topic of gear, there is a lot of stuff that does not actually work in this version of the Mage Tower. So Legion Legendaries, they've been disabled for a long time, and this challenge doesn't change that, so you can't use those effects. The Heart of Azeroth and the Azerite gear from Battle for Azeroth did briefly work on the PTR, but that was quickly disabled and likely won't be usable when the tower goes live. When it comes to Shadowlands stuff, none of your Borrowed Power will work in this challenge, so no Covenant abilities, no Soulbinds, and not even your Shadowlands Legendaries. Without all of these outside influences, it is going to be mostly about your skill at the spec, which I do think is a bit of a good thing. Uh, I will note though that for the tank challenge, there is room for certain trinket choices that may make your life a lot easier depending on what you're struggling with, namely that self-resurrection trinket from Fate Scribe in Sanctum of Domination. Uh, and I also think uh, if you have some, uh, some gear over item level 50 that has speed on it, so just a pseudo speed set, it could be quite helpful. But neither of these things is going to be mandatory and you'll be able to complete the challenge perfectly fine without them. Now, let's talk a, a little bit about my talents as a Guardian Druid and how I did it. Again, for you other tank classes watching, you can just skip ahead via the timestamps to where I start talking about the challenge itself. So, Tier 1, Brambles vs. Blood Frenzy, really not a big deal, which you pick here. It's not going to have a huge impact. Regardless, Brambles, slight increase in damage. Blood Frenzy, slight increase in rage gain. Could be useful if you're having trouble keeping Iron Furs up in that second phase. Um, I believe I killed it with Brambles, but again, personal preference here. doesn't really matter which two of these you pick. The second tier, though, 100%, I recommend Wild Charge. Uh, there are plenty of knockbacks, and in this challenge, you're on a fairly small platform, so Wild Charge uh, can save your life a bunch if you get accidentally hit by one of these knockbacks. Uh, Skull Bash, your interrupt, it does work as well, um, but it's just a lot nicer to be able to save that to actually kick things, uh, and then you can have charge a Wild Charge, uh, and then if you really, really need it, right, your Wild Charge is on cooldown, you can then use Skull Bash uh, in case you mess up twice in a row. Uh, so definitely recommend Wild Charge here. On the affinity row, I'd say it's a bit of a toss-up between balance and feral affinity. The range from balance can be useful throughout the fight, specifically in the first phase, because um, there are certain adds that can spawn just out of your range, and it's a little bit annoying. Um, but I personally found the move speed to be very beneficial from feral affinity, uh, specifically for phase two. I wasn't really shifting out of bear form for this challenge, but uh, you could definitely sneak in some uh shifts into boomkin or cat affinity uh cat form sorry and get some extra damage in that phase but it's just completely unnecessary um if you're having trouble with the dps kind of race in phase two probably the best damage increase you can get from talents is running balance affinity on this row and heart of the wild on the next row so that might give you a little bit of a dps edge over running uh the feral affinity and not running heart of the wild um, but like I said, I went Feral Affinity. I didn't even go Heart of the Wild. I, I never shifted out of bear form, and I was just okay. So really, again, a, another personal preference row here. Um, the CC row with Heart of the Wild, like I said, if you're running Balance Affinity, this can be a decent damage boost right when the second phase starts if you if you want a little bit of damage. Uh, I actually went Mighty Bash, though. Um, and the reason for that is every mob, not just the little mobs that spawn, but also the mini bosses in each of the phases... Is completely CC-able. So you can actually use stuns, any other kind of CC you have. So I had Disorienting or Incap Roar, sorry, my Torrin War Stomp, those kind of things. You can all use that to kind of delay 
uh, and giving you enough time to get defensives back up for the big tank buster. Like I said though, uh, this, if you want the damage, balance and heart of the wild. Uh, if you want a bit more safety, barrel and mighty bash, good combo. Level 40 row, um, I went Galactic Guardian. I've seen people going in Karn just for um, a, a bit of a, a damage boost right at the beginning of that cruel phase with Bloodlust and all CDs and stuff like that. I, I just went with Galactic Guardian. Um, either way, again, it's not really going to be a huge impact. You'll be able to kill it with either of these talents. Next up, uh, Earth Warden and Survival of the Fittest. I, access, I was actually testing Survival of the Fittest when I did this kill. Um, just to see if I would be able to get CDs back and have a really long second phase. Uh, but I would definitely recommend Earth Warden. Uh, Survival of the Fittest, not very necessary. Technically a tiny damage increase when used alongside Brambles, but I would just say pick Earth Warden on this row and just kind of forget about it. And same with the last row, Rend and Tear. Uh, clear choice here. Maybe, I mean, I could see an argument to say that hey pulverize because the only thing you're scared of in this entire fight is the tank buster in phase two but the rend and tear very easy set and forget a talent so i'm just i think you're gonna get the best use of that talent there all right let's go talk about the challenge itself here we go all right uh let's fast forward to where it starts all right so basically this challenge is split into two distinct phases so the first is where you need to kill this inquisitor right here and the second where you fight cruel himself now you do not lose the challenge if you die you lose when velen uh who's this guy this guy here he basically says planted uh, you lose when he dies so um make sure you pick up all the mobs that spawn throughout both phases and uh throughout the entire encounter and they don't uh get into velen and murder him starting with phase one this guy in the middle here, he is just going to be spamming this Mind Rend cast, and he kind of hangs out in the center of this pool. This pool, you see here, stacking debuff, this is a max health reduction. Uh, ideally, I'd say you keep this five stacks, maybe six stacks. Um, you don't want to go too high, though, and that brings me to my number one tip in this phase, which is just to be patient. Varus's health is really, really not important here. Uh, you... Don't try and tunnel him. Don't try and kill him as fast as possible. You're going to get too many stacks of the health reduction. And it, you, you might just die to one of the other mechanics if you're busy tunneling the boss. I would focus on dealing with literally everything else first. And then DPSing Varus should be your lowest priority. You will want to hold kicks. That drain life ability right there. That is the cast you pretty much always want to kick. Uh, you can use a CC to stop it as well. If you don't have a kick. So disorient's done. Anything like that will work uh, as uh, an interrupt there. Um, for other stuff that happens, you've got these tormenting eyes. Uh, they'll start channeling a stare right there. Uh, and you'll want to make sure that you kill them if you uh, before that stare if you can. Swap ASAP. If you can't kill them before that stare, just make sure you're staring directly at them. Otherwise, you will get knocked back. Uh, as you saw there, though, it's like literally a moonfire from, from Guardian Druids. It's enough. Pretty much any ability is going to be enough there uh, to just kind of kill it very, very quickly. Uh, think of them kind of like explosive orbs. Uh, the Mythic Plus affix, so you can't really AoE them, but you'll want to swap and, and single target them down ASAP. These ads will only appear in Phase 1. Uh, they will stop spawning in Phase 2, so you won't have to worry about them then. Next, let's talk about these Nether Horrors. So these guys will spawn throughout the entire fight. You see these four gates around the room. They'll spawn in, they'll chill over, over there a bit, and then they'll run to, to the center of the room. You see there, these guys are running directly at Velen. Um, that is something they are prone to doing, so make sure you are aware when these guys spawn. They will, half the time they'll book it to you, but half the time they will just beeline it straight to Velen. Uh, and this is something that can definitely get Velen killed a bit here. So just be aware of that. You'll want to kill these ASAP as well. They're also fairly low health here, as you see. Uh, they die pretty quickly, but eventually, oh, I didn't even get the cast off there. So eventually, after a few seconds of being alive, They'll try and start casting uh, a big AoE uh, called Netherstorm, and they'll just channel that. And that deals a ton of damage, not just to you, but to Velen as well. Um, so if you do end up not killing them quick enough, just make sure you have some sort of like AoE CC on them to stop that channel. Uh, otherwise, Velen will die very, very quickly. Last up, we have these Infernals. Uh, as you can see here, there's there's a couple of them. Only two spawn over the course of the fight, but they'll never, never die. So you see this one's about to lose all its health. 
uh, but it just its body will now stay there. See, it falls apart, and then just starts regening its health back. And you'll have to uh, you have to kill it again when its health is all back. Uh, the one thing they have is the smash attack, just a frontal line. But if you get hit by it, it will knock you pretty far. And as you see, this is a, a quite a small platform, so that is a uh, one of the the ways people die a lot on this encounter is just getting knocked off the platform. Skills like Charge, like I mentioned in the talent portion, um, Transcendence, Glide, all very good here in case you accidentally step into one of these frontals. Otherwise, you just have to kind of kite these Infernals and stay away from the smashes. Focusing these guys down isn't too big of a deal. Uh, I, I do a bit of damage to them, as you can tell, like they're dying throughout this phase. Um, but I'm not really focusing them. I'm just kind of staying away from them and have dots up on them. And, you know, they die when they die. I'm mostly focused on dodging them and staying away from them. Uh, in terms of these orbs here, so Velen will spawn these on the ground roughly every 30 seconds, and they'll last for two minutes. So as you saw there, that one actually disappeared because I didn't use it in time. All right, so this will happen if you don't use it in time, but you see I stopped there. And the reason I stopped there is remember these nether horrors and how I talked about how they will do a channel uh, if they are alive for like a few seconds. Well, if you actually touch these orbs, what happens is it CC, it disorients everything. Let me see if I can find one where I use an orb. Uh, basically, it'll CC everything and heal you to full health. The problem is that if you use that when the nether horrors are all spread out, it'll CC them at their gates. And then immediately after the CC breaks, uh, they will start channeling their nether storm all spread out throughout the room. So that's something I would recommend avoiding. Uh, it, it gets very, very dangerous, very scary. So there's that another storm cast, but you know, it doesn't get off because they're very low health. So yeah, you want to use these orbs um, before they expire, but you do want to save as many as possible for this second phase. Because like I mentioned, that first phase, you just want to be patient. You don't want to, you don't want to rush it uh, because it's not terribly difficult. The hard part is going to be this second phase. So don't waste too many resources in that first phase. Because they do disappear, though, you won't want to make kind of a mental note of which one spawned first and in what order. Uh, for me, uh, I was able to use two orbs in this first phase uh, that would have otherwise disappeared had I waited for phase two. So feel free to use those orbs and just kind of note mentally where they were, uh, where they spawned. Um, but otherwise, you want to save as many of these for that final phase. So overall, what you're trying to do in this first phase is just kind of kick... Uh, or CC that drain life, uh, swap to the eyeballs as fast as possible, uh, they have very, very low health, uh, slowly kill these infernals as they spawn, uh, and then when the horrors spawn, you also want to hard swap to those, uh, but don't use those orbs while those horrors are on the outside. Again, no rush at all in this phase. Take it slow, take your time, be safe, and just get through this phase consistently. I think my phase length was like four, four minutes, four and a half minutes-ish, uh, on this phase so it's it's really not a huge deal uh, if you go a little slow here not not the end of the world at all uh, but that brings us to phase two so when you actually kill the inquisitor let's move towards that area not health still see look how slowly i kill this guy really not a big deal three and a half minutes three and a half minutes okay that, that's where i killed uh cruel comes down as soon as you kill the inquisitor uh, any of the eyes will just despawn. Don't need to deal with those anymore. Um, and right when he comes down, this is actually kind of where I recommend popping your drums, which, I mean, I, I completely forgot I had drums. I never use drums in this encounter, so it is doable without drums, but would recommend using drums. Uh, any DPS CDs, try and keep them up for, uh, have them up at this time. Um, any, uh, the pots, use pots at this time. Uh, that kind of thing, because you have some time here after those initial beams, which I'll explain in a second here, to just kind of get free damage on Cruel himself. In terms of new mechanics, so those beams, they will just run across the center of the room. They're coming again in a second here. Where are they? There they are. Okay, so these beams, you just kind of come across the room, and they will push you back uh, as you uh, touch them. So you can either stay on the outside like that and kind of run around them and just not take too many touches. Or um, you actually, if you have a little bit of move speed, you can just walk directly through them and it's really not too much of a knockback. Um, like I said, uh, Feral Affinity, pretty, pretty good for this. 
I, you can just actually just W key right through the beams with just Feral Affinity. Just that little bit of move speed is all you really need. You can do it without Feral Affinity as well, but you get pushed back a decent amount more. Uh, and Feral Affinity just makes that very, very easy. Uh, Cruel himself, a couple main abilities. Annihilate is the big one. You see here it's giving me uh, a stacking debuff here. It's a minute and a half long, and it's just an increase on your damage taken. Uh, this is effectively what puts the timer in this phase. At some point, you just won't be able to live uh, another Annihilate cast. Uh, aside from that, he's just got this stomp, which will leave the puddles here. And as you can see, I'm doing a terrible job of puddle management. Uh, ideally, you probably want to try and keep these puddles towards the outside if you can. But as you can see, it's not the end of the world. And that's Feral Affinity at work there. Just me jumping through the middle of the beams. Really not a big deal. Uh, definitely could be a lot cleaner. Uh, the other thing that he has, I don't know if he casted it, is his uh, Twisted Reflection ability. Did I just miss it? Uh, let's go back up a little bit. Yeah, Twisted Reflection should be coming up here, but basically, it's an, a kickable cast. It'll heal him for 5% of his HP whenever he takes damage. And as you see, he starts at low health here, so that cast going off, there it is. It, it's pretty much a wipe, because he goes to very, very high health after it and uh, that's not not good to say the least so you definitely will want to be kicking that 100% of the time so uh let's let's talk about actually dealing with the timer in this phase a bit from annihilation uh, there are a few ways you can cheese it a little bit as I mentioned earlier um, cc's will work on the bosses so including cruel and uh, he'll keep trying to cast annihilate so you can't just uh, push it back in the spell queue uh, it's it's going to be at the front if you stop him mid-cast. What you can do is delay it here. So as you'll see here, uh, he's going to be coming up with a cast of Annihilate soon in, in about 10 seconds. And I'm just going to delay the boss's actual Annihilate cast. Uh, you can just use any CCs you have here. Right, I have Mighty Bash. Uh, I don't think I use my Disorient. Basically, I'm just delaying that Annihilate cast. Delaying it, delaying it. Gives me time to get CDs up. Stepping on the orb, which CCs the boss again, just kind of hanging out over here, waiting, and now he's finally getting an Annihilate cast. And the more you do that, uh, the longer the, the time between Annihilates, you can buy yourself a little bit of time to get some cooldowns, uh, defensive cooldowns to regenerate, uh, and in general just have to deal with less Annihilate casts throughout this fight to kill the boss. Um, on top of this, I did mention that self-resurrection trinket from Fate Scribe. You can actually use that to drop these stacks, uh, because you can get to, like, four or five stacks, and then die shortly after and come back to life with none. Just, again, be careful how you use it, as you don't want Velen to get swarmed with adds when it spawns, right? That would be, uh, that would be pretty bad if, like, all the horrors are up when you choose to die. Um, and you also don't want to get overkilled by too much, right? Because if you die to the Annihilate cast, it might actually overkill you too much uh, and cause the Trinket not to be able to resurrect you. So my suggestion is to, you know, take the Annihilate hit, survive it, and then die to autos shortly after, and then use the self-resurrection uh, Trinket then. Uh, and it'll just be uh, more consistent that way. In terms of how to actually handle this phase... Uh, you want to continue focusing on the horrors, as you see. Let me uh, back up, sorry. Uh, basically, whenever horrors spawn, they're your number one priority now. There's no more eyeballs. You're just dealing with those horrors ASAP. And again, making sure they don't hit Velen, because half the time they will run at Velen. Uh, you also want to keep just kind of keeping dots up, but, you know, dodging, kiting, you know, using charge to uh, fix your mistakes. Uh, these infernals. Uh, and, and just kind of avoid those knockbacks as well as the beams that come through the middle of the room. And like I said, you have a couple options with those beams. Uh, being towards the outside is probably uh, easier for both the puddles and the beams because then you can just kind of walk around like this and you don't get these puddles in the middle of the room. And you can kind of keep that area clear for whenever you need to run in and get the orbs. Also, make sure you have a kick prepared for Twisted Reflection. Otherwise, you're going to be in a bad time. Uh, and, and of course, make sure you have defensives up or the Annihilation Tank Buster, because it does hit very, very hard. Uh, you will want to make sure you mitigate every single one of those, and of course note that each successive cast of Annihilate is going to be hitting for harder and harder. So you want to make sure that you kind of um, are using bigger and bigger CDs near the end of it. And remember, these orbs will full heal you. So right after an Annihilate cast, 
you're very low health, just make sure you step, you position yourself near an orb and step right into it right after to heal yourself all the way back to full without needing to use uh, any of your own resources or if, if you don't even have like, a, I know there are some tanks back that just aren't able to heal themselves back up from that. So make sure you're saving orbs for that kind of thing. That's pretty much it though for the mage tank challenge. Uh, the mage tower tank challenge sorry uh, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys and if it was be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel uh, for more content like it you can also check me out on my twitch over at tactics where i stream high mythic plus keys and mythic rating all from a tank's perspective that's all for me now though guys if you've got any questions at all feel free to drop a comment down below otherwise i'll see you in the next video